UCF, they had a nice, easy Thursday night win over Kent State last week. Now they head to Albertson Stadium to take on an absolutely embarrassed Boise State team and that Washington just clocked by five touchdowns last week. UCF is a three-and-a-half-point road favorite here, a total of 60-and-a-half at BetUS. Kickoff set for 7 p.m. Eastern time on FS1. The Knights in the Gus Malzahn era are three-and-four against the spread as a road favorite, while Boise under Avalos, they are four-and-two against the spread as an underdog. But to be fair, this is the first time he's ever been a home dog. Since 1999, Boise has only been a home dog twice, 2018 to Fresno, 2020 to BYU. Kyle, we'll start with you here. It's easy to, you know, kind of get sucked into seeing Boise just get ground up in Seattle last week and assume that the Broncos are not going to be able to hang with the tougher teams on their schedule. But Avalos' defense was number 24 in yards per rush defense last year. They have played schemes that are similar to what Gus is bringing to town. Uh, Tell me what you're seeing here. Well, uh, UCF's practicing on a blue field, so that that should matter a lot, right? <laughs> Gus Malzahn has pulled out all the stops. Uh, you know, it seems like a Gus Malzahn special. Uh, Boise State crushed by wet Washington in week one. Secondary wasn't nearly good enough to stay with Washington. I think Washington's probably going to make quite a few defenses look bad throughout the course of the season. So uh, we'll see. Taylor Green struggled badly when pressure, pressured. Can the Boise State offensive line kind of hold their own here? Uh, the Broncos have no choice but to use uh, Taylor Green running more than what they have. Uh, that's certainly, you know, he's not a pocket passer. They don't need to turn him into that. We kind of p- talked about that in the preseason. Now, UCF, they look great against Kent State, but I think everybody's going to look really good against Kent State this year, so I don't want to make too much of that. The fact still remains that John Reese Plumley, a great runner, not a good passer. So the question is, can they run in this game? Because you don't want Plumley to have to pass a lot. Uh, can Boise State stop the run? It's the single biggest key to the handicap of this game, certainly. Plumley had 17 turnover-worthy plays last year. He already had three in week one against Kent State. I hate trusting him too much, to be honest. Um, I'm going to lean Boise State plus three and a half, thinking that this is kind of an overreaction to, to one week in this one. The Broncos played terribly. UCF didn't really play anyone. Uh, could elevation be an issue? I know it's not terribly high elevation, but we know Orlando is not – uh, high at all. So this is a, a spot where they kind of see a preview uh, of UCF's going to play at elevation multiple times this year. And I'm going to lean Boise State plus the points. I'm not going to lock it in, though. And Parker, we'll move over to you on this. Avalos is now in his third season as the Broncos head coach. It's It has felt like the bottom's about to fall out multiple times here, but he's always found a way to keep it together. Uh, UCF, top 35 in team talent. Boise is number 71 right now. It, there is a Pretty big talent, you know, mismatch here. Uh, but it's tough to bet against Boise in a bounce back spot. You know, break this down for us. Look, as much as disagreeing with Kyle feels like cutting the strings of my own parachute as I'm falling through the air, I'm going to disagree with Kyle here. And I think I'm actually talking myself into UCF. And uh, I, I I think there's a couple of reasons that that, that that really make me think that UCF's in a good spot here. One, the talent disparity is a lot bigger than a lot of people think. Uh, two, I saw a comment about the elevation not as big as people think. It's not like they're going way up into the mountains. Boise is only at 2,700 feet. Uh, You don't need an oxygen mask or anything. Uh, Three, want to call out uh, Kyle. Great point last week uh, about Boise State's passing numbers not placing a good quarterback. We saw how quickly a quote-unquote good passing defense kind of unraveled when that high-volume passing just went after um, went after them. So uh, I, 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 their, their defense gave up 72.5% completion, 11.3 yards per attempt, only six pressures on 42 dropbacks. That means they were sitting back trying to play defense and they still couldn't do it. Um, and I think, you know, you talk about like the Boise – Uh, bounce back, I think we're looking at the Boise pendulum swinging. So Boise had so much trouble with the passing offense that they're going to have to focus so much attention on the gravity of rushing from UCF with John Reese Plumbing and RJ Harvey, who averaged 8.8 yards per attempt last week. That's bullying. That's just straight up bullying against Kent State. Uh, They are going to be able to put a ton of pressure on the run game. That's going to take resources away from the pass game and free up John Reese Plumley, who did complete 75% of his passes last week uh, to, to make those successful passes, to get those explosive plays. Um, another thing that really pointed out, I, I like the symmetry of UCS offense. It honestly mimics Washington a little bit, just in target distribution. 60% of UCF targets went to four guys. Townsend had 3.52 uh, yards. 
yards per route run out of the slot. So it gives you a nice kind of layered weapon. And then you have Hudson and Baker both go get it, guys. 2.27 yards per route run, 2.03. Those guys combined for 127 yards total. So I like the multiplicity on UCF's offense. I like the gravity of the rushing attack with Harvey and John Reese Plumley. I like that Boise's thinking about how bad that pass defense was last week. Maybe all week they're working on pass defense reps and that run run defense is going to over compensate uh, and, and have to be stretched really, really thin. So I'm going to take UCF and the talent advantage on the road, on the blue field, at the elevation. I'm trusting in Gus here. Trusting in Gus. I don't know how many times uh, I've heard that before, but <laughs> <laughs> but here we go. Let's lock it in. Parker's going to take UCF minus three and a half uh, on the blue field. We shall see. I think that's going to be a very, very interesting ball game. Again, data points. That's what we're looking for this week. Week two, trying to figure out what was real from week one and what wasn't.